The death of Nero brought a time of chaos in Rome. They needed a strong leader to come and pull things back together, to bring stability. Vespasian was, came from humble beginnings. His mother wanted both of her sons to rise above their station in life. The older brother was ambitious and was involved in politics. In the course of his life, he became a senator in Rome. Vespasian had no interest in politics. <laughs> his mother finally told him the essence of saying, if you don't get your act together, you'll, be, you'll become a footman for your brother. He decided for him to advance in life, he needed to join the military, which he did. His first 14 years was uneventful. Not much happened. He did come up in, st in status, but not much. Finally, Claudius became emperor and sent Vespasian to Germany to take over a legion there. It was there that he was able to rise his, to, 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 to raise up his, his status and, and his rank till finally he became a general. And when Claudius decided to invade Britain, he chose this general to be one of the ones that went into Britain with him. Ah, oh, this is where Vespasian distinguished himself. He led over 30 campaigns. He subdued two powerful uh, uh, tribes. He conquered over 20 towns and villages and, and, and fortresses. He subdued the Isle of Wight. Claudius rewarded his victories by giving him a triumphal entry into Rome. Well, his victories, the glory of his victories, uh, didn't last long. Claudius' new wife, Agrippina, just didn't like the general. He thought it best just to stay out of the court, especially the palace. Things got worse when Claudius died and Nero became the emperor. Now his enemy was the most powerful woman in the world. He left Rome went back home to northern Italy, became a mule breeder. He stayed that for quite a while until the day came when Nero killed his mother. He liked the general, brought him out, he brought him back to Rome. He then gave him a governorship in northern Africa. This was customary. Uh, they would have a one-year term where they could build up their wealth as a way of, uh, of, uh, of, of a reward for their service for Rome. They did this by raising taxes for Rome and themselves. They also accepted bribes and tribute money. But Vespasian was not that type of man. He hated corruption. He ruled with justice and peace. He liked to build relationships and friendships, which would put him in good stead years later. But after his year was done, he was bankrupt. He had to hawk everything he had to his brother just to get back to Rome. Nero still liked him, insisted that he go with him to his tour of Greece, where he would go from town to town and do all of his performances, his music and drama and art. Well, this wasn't good for Vespasian because he had a habit of arriving to a performance late or leaving early. Worse than that, he had a tendency to fall asleep. Oh, Nero hated this. Sent him out. Said he was banned from go going to the palace anymore. He was out of the inner circle. Sent him back in, he sent him into retirement back north, which was a grace because Nero was known to kill and execute people that he didn't like. 
There he once again took up breeding mules, became known as the muleteer. But then things changed for Nero. The great Jewish revolt started. This came about when the Jewish people rebelled against Nero's taxes, finally stopped paying them. The governor there looted the temple sent soldiers into private homes to get what they could. Oh, this ignited a fire of rebellion that spread across the entire nation. They sent a Roman army in, but they were defeated. This strengthened the, 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 the rebels even more. They took over Jerusalem and set up a new government for, for the land. Something needed to be done. Nero needed a strong general. He sent for Vespasian, gave him the authority to go do what he had to, to, to put down the rebellion. The general took his um, oldest son, Titus, with him, made him second in command. When he got there, he was uh, not in a hurry for a quick victory. He mapped out his plan carefully. He decided not to directly attack Jerusalem at, at the beginning. That's where the main rebel force was, was located. Besides, he heard that there were factions in there fighting each other, killing each other. Best leave them alone. He turned his 60,000 soldiers and took them north to Galilee. There he went from town to town to fortress to stronghold and conquered it. In time, he captured the head of the rebel army in Galilee, a man by the name of Josephus. Josephus realized that uh, once he was captured that their cause was hopeless. He literally switched sides. He even helped in the Galilee campaign. Still, he was slated to be sent to Rome to Nero, there to be executed in a, in, a, in, a, in a parade. But just before he left, he told the general about a Jewish prophecy. He said, the prophecy says that uh, a, 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 a one will come from Judea that will rule the world. He said, to the general, you are that man. So Vespasian decided not to send him to Rome. Instead, made him his interpreter. This man, this man went from being a slave to a trusted interpreter. He earned his freedom and finally became a Roman citizen. He became known as the most famous first century historian. His books are still being sold in bookstores today. Well, Vespasian turned his soldiers south to head towards Jerusalem, conquering one town after the other, setting up his supply lines. Everything was in order when suddenly he stopped because he got the news that Nero had committed suicide. A new emperor was in place. The general sent his, sent his son, Titus, to go to Rome and to reassure the new emperor that, they had, that he had their support. But before Titus got there, he heard that that emperor had been killed. He stopped, turned around, and went back to Judea. There they, they found out that the, yet the second emperor had been killed, and a third one was in place. But they knew that he was self-indulgent, that he was addicted to luxury. He, he was blatantly immoral. He had several banquets a day. He allowed his men to go into private homes and loot them. Vespasian knew to save the empire, he needed to do something. 
he marked out his plan and put it in action. He made Titus in charge of the Jewish rebellion. He then sent some generals to Europe to secure the loyalty of the, of the uh, troops that were there. He himself did not go to Rome, but turned and went to Egypt in northern Africa. There he cut off the, the food supply for Rome. He was able to do this because of the friendships that he had developed there. They knew that they, they were willing to give up immediate profits because they knew this man was an honest man and was just. The generals that were in Europe heard that, 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 that uh, what was happening, that Vestasian had sent his generals there they immediately pledged their support that Vespasian be the new emperor. But then they didn't wait. They turned and, and attacked Rome themselves. A huge battle ensued. And unfortunately, Vespasian's brother, the senator, was killed. But they won the battle. And the Senate unanimously voted that Vespasian was the new emperor. He could now release the food supply and head to Rome. Meanwhile, Titus was not as patient at his, as his father had been. He immediately put Jerusalem under siege and for four months he battled the city sending, sending uh, bombs in, in, inside, burning what he could. He broke down wall after wall till finally he broke through the city and burned it to the ground. The heat was so severe that it melted the gold that was in the temple and it flowed between the stones. Thus fulfilling the prophecy of Jesus that not one stone would be left on top of the other. They had to do that to get the gold. And the temple mound was cleared. Vespasian was a common man who became emperor. He had starts and stops, but through it all, he was an honest man, hated corruption. He was steady and reliable. He was also a rock-like man, and like other Roman commanders of his day, he could be cruel and heartless, but he was known for his realism and his common sense, and he brought stability to Rome. He strengthened the, he strengthened the economy. Still, he engaged in a very ambitious building program. Much of Rome was still in shambles from the great fire of years before. He built it up, rebuilt some of the public buildings that had been destroyed during the, during the battle. He decided not to move in to Nero's golden house, but instead he tore it down, tore down the huge statue of Nero. Instead of a house for the emperor, he built there a house for the people. It was the largest structure in the ancient world. It could seat over 50,000 people at a time. There were so many unique things about this building, but one of them is that wild animals could have here on, on the floor. This was done by secret elevators that would come up and open up trap doors and let them out. Uh, he could flood the floor and reenact sea battles. It was the Colosseum, and it's still in Rome today. He ruled for 10 years bringing stability to Rome that was about to fall apart. 
He was the first, he was the second emperor to die of old age, the first one being Augustus. But he was the first emperor to be succeeded by a natural born son, Titus. As he lay dying, he um, knew that they would deify dead emperors. Suddenly, he rose up and said, Methinks I'm about to become a god. 